constitute for spontaneously created universes, would dominate any pre-existing amplitude. It is therefore reasonable to assume that the amplitude for spontaneously created universes would be the whole amplitude. This is the no boundary condition. What does the no boundary condition predict for the universe? To answer this, one needs to study outside. The amplitude for a spontaneously created universe depends on the present state of the universe. Consider first the amplitude for a homogeneous isotropic present state. This will be given by solving the field equations for a region bounded by a pre sphere of radius A on which there is a homogeneous scalar field, phi. Start with the scalar field, phi1, at the center of the sphere, and integrate outwards. This can be interpreted as the universe starting with the field, phi1, and rolling down the potential hill, to the minimum at phi equals zero. The real part of the action of the solution is approximately minus 1 over v1, the value of the potential at phi1. Using units in which the Planck constant, the speed of light, and Newton's constant are one. I am also ignoring numerical factors. The wave function, psi, will be strongly peaked for phi 1 close to the minimum of the potential at phi equals zero, and will be exponentially damped away from the minimum. At first sight, this would seem to imply that the universe started with phi 1 near 0. Such a universe would be an empty sitter like space, rather than the matter-filled universe we observe, with an early period of very high density. The explanation for this discrepancy is that so far we have considered the wave function only for homogeneous isotropic universes. This is what one could measure if one could observe the whole of the surface at the present time. But we aren't angels with a view of the whole universe. Instead, we can see only a small part of the surface, roughly a patch of size the present Hubble radius. There will be many such patches on the final surface. Thus the probability distribution for the initial field, phi 1, 
will be the wave function squared times the waiting factor of the volume of the present universe divided by the present Hubble volume. If the initial field, phi1, is large and the potential is not too steep, the field will slowly roll down the potential to the minimum at phi equals zero. During the slow roll, the universe will inflate or expand almost exponentially by a large factor. The volume waiting will increase the probability of a large initial field, phi1, and a long period of inflation if the initial potential, V1, obeys an inequality known as the eternal inflation condition. This favors large almost flat initial potentials. If the potential has a local maximum below Planck value, fields that start near this maximum are likely to provide the dominant contribution to the spontaneous creation of universes. They will have a long period of inflation and will have almost exactly the critical density. Such universes would be semi-classical everywhere, so string theory would not be necessary to understand the origin of the universe. If the potential has what is called the landscape form, with many local maxima and minima, there will be many different kinds of universe created. This can explain why we live in a universe that is so remarkably fine-tuned. Only such universes will contain life. I have shown that standard field theory, applied to quantum gravity, leads to the spontaneous creation of universes out of nothing. If there are scalar fields with a general landscape-like potential, there will be many different kinds of universes produced. Some, at least, would be like the universe we observe. We can explain the origin of the universe purely within the realm of science without invoking some supernatural agency. Thank you for listening. Thank you.
question or two. Yeah? Lovely. I think we have time for one or two questions, if they're not too long. Questions or comments? <laughs> okay, well, if there are no more questions or no questions at all, let's thank our speaker again. about it.